I've been from the country my entire life. I was actually born in the hospital that I now work in. I've worked there for 25 years. I can honestly say that this is absolutely the worst I have seen it. Staff are now beyond exhausted and tired. I do think about what other career I could go into. I have a mortgage and I have three kids, so I do need to pay my bills. Nurse Christy Wilson is preparing for another long shift at Griffith Base Hospital in central New South Wales. With people having to isolate and testing positive, it is putting enormous amounts of pressure on the managers. I'm gravely concerned about what we will do. I mean, I don't know where we get more nurses from and I don't know where we get more beds from. She's not alone. Christy, who holds a leadership position in the New South Wales Nurses and Midwives Association, is among healthcare workers in regional and metro hospitals, warning the health system is under strain from growing COVID admissions and furloughed staff. We have two wards in my hospital that have started working 12-hour shifts. Staff on those wards are picking up extra shifts on their days off. Nationally, there's a shortage of healthcare professionals, especially GPs and specialists in regional areas. And the problem is growing. According to the Australian Bureau of Statistics, job vacancies in the sector have continued to rise during the pandemic, with resignations and increased workload the top two reasons for the shortfall. Truth is, we were struggling well and truly before COVID. COVID has exacerbated everything and we are really struggling now. Some communities where you've got a one or two doctor town, you know, if the doctor tests positive to COVID, that basically means the medical service is non-existent for that town. It could mean a 100, 200 kilometre drive to the next health service. Federal Regional Health Minister David Gillespie previously worked as a regional doctor himself. Whether you're in a general practice, a pharmacy, a regional hospital, the whole system is under pressure. In the outbreak where there were these little towns with one doctors, the Royal Flying Doctor Service has turned up with um, their nurse practitioners, paramedics and even uh, uh, RFDS doctors have stayed to staff, say, the Wilcannia Hospital in times of need. GPs told 7.30 that PCR tests in some regional towns were taking up to 12 days to return results. We have heard, you know, day eight, day nine, and people still haven't heard, you know, or haven't had a result on their PCR test. David Gillespie said the government was distributing rapid antigen tests from the national medical stockpile, but was prioritising more vulnerable groups. We prioritise the areas that we're immediately responsible for, and that is aged care, Aboriginal medical services and frontline health workers, including GPs and pharmacists. Shepparton in Northern Victoria is home to one of the hospitals where a code brown has been declared, meaning staff can be recalled from leave. All non-urgent elective surgery has also been paused. The news was another blow for 35-year-old Tess Younger. She's been waiting for endometriosis surgery for months. But most of the specialists are a distance away from us. I think a lot of women who are regional or have to travel for their specialists uh, have found themselves just this sort of continuously waiting. Ms Younger says her condition is at times debilitating. Being able to be able-bodied and run after my son and provide a level of care to him. He's, you know, 17 months old, needs to be held and, and cared for and played with. And when you're in excruciating pain and you can't lean over, there's nothing worse than feeling unable to do that. And I don't have control of how quickly or how aggressively like endometriosis comes back um, or grows. And so what am I, a sitting duck? That's what it feels like. You lose hope when you're already trying month to month and living in pain. We look after Indigenous people in 19 of the most remote communities in the Northern Territory. Hey guys. Hi. Dr Simon Quilty is the medical advisor for Purple House Dialysis Centre in Central Australia, providing critical services for those with kidney disease. Viruses in pandemics will absolutely tear through these communities. 
So it's really vital in those circumstances that uh, we protect our nursing staff because if they are infected, then of course the dialysis unit will shut down. They're taking matters into their own hands, making ventilation pods in the increasingly likely case a COVID patient needs life-saving kidney dialysis. Basically what they are is a very small negative pressure plastic hood that evacuates the air around a patient and puts it through a filter so no viruses can circulate. Purple House have also organised their own stockpile of rapid tests, anticipating the national shortage. Other means of diagnosing people with symptoms are simply impossible when you live very remotely, seven or eight hundred kilometres from Alice Springs. The political football of who funds this kind of stuff, whether it be Commonwealth or State, needs to be resolved. We don't have the time for that kind of politicking in the space that we're working at. We need to ensure that, you know, healthcare professionals aren't having to spend hours on the phone trying to source rapid antigen tests because these are people who are most at risk of exposure. They're dealing with possible COVID cases every day. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 7.30's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.